All right. Anyone get their Sunday afternoon nap here? All right. We have some people filled with the Spirit. <laughs> uh, who wish they got their Sunday afternoon nap? Okay. Glad you're honest. Glad you're honest. Well, I'm glad you're here this evening. Um, thank you for those that uh, did the, were involved in the burger burn and uh, the, raising the for teen camp. Uh, the Lord is able to change a lot of lives with young people. Um, it goes without saying that sometimes you, when you pull away and pull apart, that's sometimes when you hear from the Lord the clearest. And uh, those teens going to camp, it might just seem like, well, it's a few days, but a lot can happen in a few days. So thanks for sacrificing and helping and giving towards that. And uh, there, uh, it wasn't on the announcements, but we're doing something special for Mother's Day. We're going to do a mother and children's choir. So sorry, men, not in this one, but if you're a mom or a kid, or you identify as a mom or kid, you're welcome to be part of this Mother's Day choir. And uh, what they're going to do is over several Sundays, right after the morning service, Brother Isaiah de Villiers has uh, selected a song to practice, and then they're going to sing it for Mother's Day. And uh, looking, forward to the, looking forward to that. Uh, let's take our Bibles tonight to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to look at God's voice for today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to read, um, read verses 9, starting verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And just on a side note, I truly believe that we can only see a part of the visible light spectrum. I personally believe we can only hear part of the you know, audible spectrum of sound. And I personally believe that that's going to be supernaturally opened up, as it were, maybe prior to the curse of this earth, where we can potentially hear color and see in a way that we've never been able to wear. This is spiritual, but also literal fulfillment one day but look at verse 10 but God hath revealed them unto us by his what for the spirit searcheth all things yea, the deep things of God for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of a man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually Discern, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Paul is writing to this church at Corinth, and it's a church in division, it's a church in strife. Why? Because they have been enamored by the voices of men. One part of the church, if you will, says we're of Paul. This side says we're of Apollos. And they've elevated man and, and the importance of man's wisdom and words. And Paul is saying, hey, the wisdom of this world is going to come to nothing. You have, you've elevated these men and they're just vessels used of God. Mouthpieces. The real voice that is critical is the voice of God. The wisdom of God. And it's not, not too different from then is today where man's voice is elevated above God's. We live in a world where you can listen to anyone 24-7. Can I get a witness? You can listen to kids if you want. You can listen to people from across the globe. We are no, this, this time and age we live in, we are in information overload. Would you agree? 
In fact, we have to unplug. Why? Because it can become overwhelming. There's so much out there. And we go, and our country as a society goes to the talking heads. You know, this general, and uh, this expert, and this scientist. And look, knowledge, that's a blessing. But can we agree that there is an age where the Bible says that knowledge runs to's and fro, and it's expanded, and we have more technology, and we have the ability to do so much more technologically, but morally and ethically, we have failed. We have failed. What is that? They've... They've allowed the voice of men to be elevated above the voice of God. And Christian, we're going to see tonight, there is no replacement in your life to the voice of God. Amen. In fact, you honestly need, and I, I know this is going to sound mystic or a little weird, but we're going to show that it's not. You need a personal word from God. You do. He, he's not interested in, in some disconnected, oh, I, I, uh, Pastor Bez come, and there's a little bit of this, but Pastor Bez comes and he regurgitates the Word and I eat it. Amen. And that's good, right? That's what a mama bird does, right, Brother Eli? But there's also a time where he wants you to feed on his Word directly with him. Not regurgitated. There's nothing that can replace the voice of God. A lot of times in my life, and it, the Lord has taught me and has continued to teach me, but I needed a personal word from the Lord. A decision, guidance, a, a critical relationship. Something that, man, if it wasn't for the voice of God giving me a clear direction, I, man, I don't know where I would be. I wouldn't be here tonight. Any of you here? That you wouldn't be here if you hadn't directly heard from the Lord at a critical juncture in your life. So let's, let's talk about that. How do we hear a personal voice? It's obviously not audible. If that's you, you come talk to me after and Pastor Bez and I will, will you know, give you some counsel. But what is that voice of God? How, uh, because I believe the serious Christian and you're here tonight and on Sunday night, you're, you want to develop and grow beyond the milk. You want to go into that meat and that, that is meant for strong use. And this is something you will develop for the rest of your Christian life. This ability to discern and receive the voice of God. So let's look at this tonight. If you'll bow in prayer and then we'll start in verse 9. Lord, Heavenly Father, move me aside. Lord, there are a lot of voices in this world, but we understand your voice is the one we need to hear from. Use your word now to just, in a practical way, unpackage some real helpful things that we can do that really you've given us, you've gifted us to where we can hear from you, Lord. If there's any distraction, we pray you'd remove it. If our minds are elsewhere, Lord, bring us here. Lord, settle our hearts and our minds to where now we can be still and know that you're God and hear from you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The first thing, and as a Christian, you probably would be able to teach some of this, but the first thing that you want to know as you discern and hear uh, the voice of God in your life is that as you immerse yourself in God's Word, it amplifies the Holy Spirit's voice in your life. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9 where, where Paul, referencing the Old Testament, starts. He says, but as it is what? But as it is written. They're talking, they're, he's contrasting the world's wisdom and God's wisdom and brings them to a place where he says, as it is written. And then he finishes the thought in verse 10, but God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. As you digest the Word of God in your life, the ability or radar to detect and discern things spiritually enlarges. As you dive into God's Word, it allows the Holy Spirit to have more of a microphone in your life to where you hear Him clearly and, and it is un, undoubt, undoubtfully Him. But without that Word, it's, it's almost inaudible. It's almost inaudible. He says, as it is written, 
eye hath not seen, and the, you know these hidden things. So the Spirit knows. But then he says in verse 10, but God hath revealed them to us by His Spirit. By His Spirit. You cannot hear the Holy Spirit without some knowledge, in essence, from the Holy Scriptures. They're intertwined. A lot of people say, well, God, what? Told me. You heard that before? And a lot of things they blame on God, that was not God that told them. Have you encountered that? Well, God told me I need to divorce my wife. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Uh, did she have an affair? Or, you know, is she abusing you? Like, what, what is the biblical grounds? No, it's just uh, I don't feel in love anymore. Well, doesn't the Bible say love your enemies? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, that, the Holy Spirit doesn't contradict the Holy Scriptures. And I know this is simple, but sometimes it's the simple things that people miss. He said, uh, as it is written, and then he shows that the Holy Spirit has revealed through this. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're talking about as you dive into God's Word, the Holy Spirit's voice becomes louder and clearer in your life. And, and, it, and we see Peter. Peter was no, no stranger to Christ. And this is what he says in 2 Peter 1 and verse 16, talking about the Holy Spirit's work. He says, because it is written, oh, yes, 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. Verse 16, he says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a what? Okay, so Peter heard this voice from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this what church? Voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with Him the Holy Mount. And he, Peter has all of this experiential God he, audibly speaking, and yet this is what Peter then tells us in verse 19. We have also a more sure what? He's saying, the loudest voice I heard on that mount with Jesus Christ transfigured in power and in brightness and we had to fall on our faces. He says, we have something more sure. We have something more certain. We have something where we know God has spoken to us even clearer than that day in His what? His Word. His Word. Someone hears something from God, it should never contradict His Word. You get a vision, you get a dream, and look, I've heard it all, and I encourage it all. Hey, where it lines up with the Word of God, go for it. When it's hazy and you're not sure where it lines up with the Word of God, drop it. Drop it. Why? Because we have a more sure Word. God, think about it, the Holy Spirit in His nature is not going to speak to Isaiah something He has not spoken to the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit in His nature is not going to speak something He has not already spoken. What does He do? In His nature, He uses, Brother Eli, what He has spoken to then personally apply it to your life. It's His nature. And as you immerse yourself in the Word of God, you allow Him more and more volume and ability to communicate in your life. So how do we do this practically? How do we do this practically? Well, the first practical way, and I know our kids do this, but sometimes we as adults, uh, we neglect it, and that is Bible memorization. Right? In Proverbs, it says, uh, write them, talking about the words and wisdom, on the table of your heart. Any old school people out here remember when boys used to carve girls' names into trees? Right? It, it's kind of like that. You take your heart, like a piece of wood or tree, and you take God's knife of His Word and you carve it in there to where it's embedded. Where it's there. And, and 
what does that do? Man, that Word of God is there for when you need it, even when you didn't expect it. What, what happens? The Holy Spirit uses it now to talk to you. Have you been there? I, I'm late for work. I don't want to go to work. I, I feel like staying home and being lazy and sleeping. And I pray. Mistake number one to pray about that, right? I pray, God, can I just stay home and take a break? And as clear as day, except a man work, he shall not eat. Oh, <laughs> oh let me try my eight ball with God one more time, you know? Uh, Lord, you know, I could use rest. I could use some rest. Uh, the rest of a laboring man is sweet. Oh, what is that? The Word of God you've hidden in that? The Holy Spirit's now able to use it as a microphone in your life. You've memorized it. You've hid it in your heart. And now you can clearly hear His voice. It's not going to be man's wisdom, but it will be God's wisdom. And a lot of times it does run contrary to what we want. Right? Anyone else like that? You pray and God tells you what you don't want to hear. (laughs) Amen? But it's what we need to hear. Bible memorization. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I can do what I want. Is that what it says? No, that I might not sin against thee. God will speak to you and illuminate things you didn't even realize were sin as you memorize and meditate on His word. One, one gentleman said he's memorized 271 commands in the New Testament on Christian living. I thought, my goodness, man. I bet you he lives a good life. That, what is that? He's memorized it to where now the Holy Spirit can bring it into his mind, bring it into his heart. Oh, man, when, we, when you have you that have kids, do not despise them memorizing Scripture. I, I was my daughter's age memorizing Scripture. Did I understand it? No. Can we be real right now? <laughs> but then years later, as the Holy Spirit illuminated it and brought it out, I was in the middle of downtown Boise, man. I was trying to be a blessing to people doing this crazy thing called open-air preaching. There's this guy swinging this guitar case wanting to hit me. And there's all this crowd gathered to see will the preacher survive? Like it was about 10 or 20 people. And then, thank God I didn't you know, get hit by that guitar and that crazy man left. And then oh, the crowd grew larger because they want to say, what is this preacher going to say? And they said, how do you know you're saved? What changed for you? They're asking me all these questions. How do we know the Bible is true? And I kid you not, I had not been to Bible college. I had not gotten any seminary education. And the verses I learned when I was six, seven, eight years old started coming out of me. Don't underestimate the power the Holy Ghost can use with the memorized Word. What does it do? It's like giving God a microphone in your life as you hide His Word in His heart. Because how He communicated then is how He communicates now. Bible memorization. Bible meditation. Bible meditation. I'm going to steal from Brother Alex an illustration he used for the teens talking about these cows that chew on the cud with three stomachs and they'll throw it up and eat it and swallow it and throw it up and eat it and swallow it. And they break down that grass to its bare elements and that's what god wants us to do with his word bible meditation i was listening to brother felipe as he was teaching this morning and he connected new testament baptism with the ritual purification of the red heifer because they got the water and the ashes and as we come to the baptistry it's a symbol of christ's death and our burial and resurrection because he's our lamb and i thought That's beautiful. You know how that comes? Bible meditation. I had this one young man. He was so frustrated. He said, uh, I read the Bible and I don't understand it. And he said, I just want to understand it. I said, brother, look at me. I've read it through at least 20 times. I still don't understand some things. But I'll tell you this. The more and more you read it, the more and more pieces of the puzzle you put together. Have you ever been there where God gives you a piece of the puzzle you've been looking for for a long time? You have too, right? And, and, and that piece becomes so valuable. Why? Because 
that was through meditation and patience. I love what my mom always used to tell me as a kid. Hey, no one became a black belt overnight. Right? And there's just some things you have to learn along the way, but that meditation and thinking about it. The Bible says that your heart will be in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. That Bible meditation, can I be honest with you? Now that now, Have you noticed that the military business is really into meditation? Uh, our unit used to, used to get together and that we would go through guided meditation. Anyone else experiencing any of that? Uh, it's, it's gotten big, this Eastern meditation. You know what the difference is between Eastern meditation and biblical meditation? Eastern meditation wants you to empty your mind. So someone can fill it up. I'm just being real with you. And that someone is not God. Biblical meditation is where He wants you to focus on Him and His Word. He wants you to have an object of your thinking and attention. Biblical meditation. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it once in a while. No. Day and what? You can't sleep, Brother Eli? Meditate on the Word. Puts me to sleep. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in day and night, so thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and so thou shalt have good success. Does that mean you're going to be successful and wildly rich? No, but it does mean that the, His peace will be in your heart whose mind is stayed on thee. And you know a lot of anxiety, fear, worry, you know what will bring us back? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any good report, you can maybe think about those things. No, it says Think on these things. You have a battle in your mind and meditation is how the Holy Spirit is going to bring you back to a place of peace. Peace that passeth all understanding. Meditation is not just uh, the Eastern religion's uh, idea. No, it is God's idea to meditate on His Word, to think, how does this verse apply? What is a verse that applies to my relationship? What is a verse that applies to what I'm dealing with? Lord, would You give me something to think on? Think about the Bible stories. These things were written for our example. You know, have you ever been in a situation and saw yourself in a Bible story? Like, man, this is a real David and Goliath. (laughs) This is a real fill in the blank, you know, uh, Pharisees versus Christ, and, and you can just see the characters in front of you. That's the Holy Spirit using the meditation of His Word to help speak to you. Bible memorization, Bible meditation, and then Bible reading. Bible reading. Men have changed history because they read the Bible. Martin Luther This monk, this Catholic monk that would whip himself to try and get close to God and his blood would run down his back and he never felt any closer to God and he saw himself as a sinner and he would shave his head and he would sleep on the rocks. Everything he could, he said, God, before his salvation, God, I hate God. Why? Because he is so distant and there's no connecting to God. Stubbins, one of his mentors, said, Luther, study Romans. So he started reading Romans 1, verse 17. He says, as written, the just shall live by faith. Yea, from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. And it rocked his world. The fact that you can just faith connecting to God and faith alone and glauba alone align. And the, wow, that changed him. And it changed Europe. And it brought the Renaissance. And it brought the Reformation because he read something and the Holy Spirit illuminated it and made it personal to him. Amen. Years later, August Franca, you, you, you have heard of orphanages and uh, women's shelters. This had never occurred before in history. August Franca in Germany, Hall of Germany, he's reading this, this Bible verse in Jeremiah 33 and it says, And call unto me, and I will answer thee, And show us the great and mighty things which thou knowest what? Not. There had never been orphanages in the history. 
There had at least not recorded history. There had never been anything like a women's shelter or anything like this. He started them in Halle, Germany, supported solely by the Lord. No business, just people giving. And he had 2,000 orphans in Halle. And he put that verse, you can see it in Halle, Germany, on his old orphanage hall in Germany. It says, Call upon me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He changed Germany. He changed those kids' lives because he read something and applied it to his life. What is that? You getting in the Word, you diving deep in the Word makes the voice of God clear, personal, real, specific in your life. Have you experienced that? You're reading something and all of a sudden it's not talking about Abraham anymore. It's not talking about Moses. It's just not talking about Paul. It's not talking about that. It's talking about you. What is that? That's the Spirit's ability to take His Word as you read it and speak to you. So as we immerse ourselves, the voice of God becomes louder, louder in your life. And then secondly, finding God's voice requires stillness and quietness. Look at verse 12, 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. The Bible says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the... What? The Spirit of the world. Have you noticed that the Spirit of the world just says, Go, 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 go. Like we saw on the calendar this morning. Busy, 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 busy. The Spirit of the world, man, it is a hard taskmaster. Right? Right? People just want more and more. There's no satisfaction. There's no peace. There's no joy. And they're chasing it. And Paul pauses here in talking about the Spirit, in talking about how He reveals things to us. It says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. Honestly, This principle, though very simple, is very true in my life. When the Lord has spoken to me clearest, it's often in a moment of stillness and quietness. But what that requires is for me to pull away from the world's noise. The Bible says in um, Mark 1.35, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Christ has been ministering all week, healing people. He's tired. He knows the day is about to start soon and before the sun comes up and before the people line up to be healed and the crowds appear to hear Him teach, He chooses to go to a solitary place apart and there prayed. You, to listen to the Holy Spirit's voice, you have to have a retreat. You have to have. Jesus said, hey, when you pray, enter into what? Your closet. Have you ever, has anyone ever done that? It's pretty, you don't have to do a closet, but you have to get away. You have to be quiet. Be still and know that I am God. Pastor Bez said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, you cannot learn, you cannot grow from the Holy Spirit, from God, when your heart and your mind is at turmoil and unrest. Have you found that to be true? I have. Just like my little kids, you know, when uh, there's music going and there's kids running around like the picture and someone's bleeding and someone's screaming, it's not really a good time to be like, no, let me teach you how to do addition. Right? It's the same thing with God. He wants to teach you. He wants to reveal these things from the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But oftentimes, we're running around. We have everything blasting in our ears. And He's saying, hey, come apart and I'll speak to you. In in 1 Kings 19, Elijah, he sees this earthquake. He sees this fire. He sees this tornado. He sees all of this. And the Bible says God was not in the fire. God was not in the tornado. God was not in the earthquake, but God came to him in a what? In a still, small voice. You have to have that place of quietness and rest to hear his voice, Christian. 
Sheffy, an evangelist, Ezekiel Sheffy. He would get, he was known, he got this little prayer shawl of like a lamb skin, and he would go up on the mountain, he would pray, and they call him Praying Sheffy. One time he had this horse, and it was, he talked to his horse, he's a little nuts, right? But you're on the road traveling as an evangelist back in those days, your horse is like your only friend. And uh, he, he was going to pray, and he said before he even prayed, God told him, give his horse away. Right? He, he was mightily used of the Lord. He saw many people saved in his day. He would have these huge tent meetings and people would come to Christ and get saved. One time he prayed that this, um, in those days there was all these illegal uh, distilleries out in the woods and out in the mountains and they would distill liquor. And he uh, ran into one one day and he prayed that God specifically would bring a mighty oak tree and destroy this man's distillery. This man laughed at him, mocked at him with his you know, gun pointed at him and said, get out of here. That night a storm came and an oak tree from another mountain came and fell and destroyed that man's distillery. I mean, this guy just had power with God and the voice of God spoke to him, but where that came from was that time alone on the mountain. And Christian, you need time alone. Uh, I remember when I was at work on the call center right out of uh, high school, my mom was going to have this surgery. And uh, I did this normally. I would take my breaks, my 10-minute breaks, and I would go. They had this little area where the lights were out, this little room. No one would go in, and I would go, and I'd pray to God there. And I remember specifically, she was going into this surgery, and I said, Lord, I'm not there. I, I, want, I should be there, but I can't. And Lord, I pray you give her just a, a good surgery and everything. And I don't want to be weird, but it's almost as if, and there wasn't an audible voice, but God just said the surgery's going to go well. I'm going to take care of your mom. I got a call. Surgery went well. And she had always had this problem sleeping, always being tired. In the hospital, they discovered she had sleep apnea and she was able to get set up with a CPAP. So not only did the surgery go well, but God blessed her in addition to that. And, you know, what was that? Ten minutes alone. Every day on your break. Right? Right? The Lord understands our busy schedules. The Lord understands the responsibilities He's given you. You know, Daniel, he was this uh, counselor to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And yet there's seasons or times in Daniel's life where he said, I set my face to seek the Lord. In all your responsibility and duty, do not neglect that still, small, quiet time with God. That voice it is so critical in our life, but He will not come to those who are too busy or that aren't willing to pull away. You know, teen camps for you teens, retreats for men, retreats for women. Honestly, just a time you might take a day off and go and spend in the Word of God, go and spend in prayer. A lot of times things God has not spoken to you in years, God will bring up to you. I had that happen to me. And I thought, wow, how long, God, have you been wanting to tell me this? <laughs> but I wouldn't pull away to a special season of prayer and fasting and reading. And, you know, a lot of times the Lord has the instruction, the Lord has the peace, the Lord has the guidance, the Lord has that personal word for what you're dealing with, but you haven't pulled away. To show Him, I will set my face to seek the Lord. That this is important and you and your audience matter to me and I need to hear your voice. So, He's a gentleman. He won't interrupt your schedule. Would to God He interrupted more of our schedules. Amen? Find that still and small voice that's only found by in the quiet place. And that's a lot of times where God speaks to you. You immerse yourself in God's Word. makes His Word louder. And then, let me just finish with this thought in, um, back in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. A lot of times, the Lord wants to see how bad you want it. Are you willing to search? I don't understand how God works a lot of times, but it says here that His Spirit 
searcheth the deep things of God. It says we can't understand Him. We're a different nature. We're a spirit of man. He's the spirit of God. It'd be like a chimpanzee trying to communicate in a different nature with us. And yet here we are with God. And he says something interesting. He says the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So in essence, they are one, but in essence, the Spirit actually is searching. And I, I'm just being honest, in my life, a lot of times the voice of God has come after a search with Him. Have you ever experienced that? Pastor Bez talked about this morning where you notice what the Holy Spirit is doing and you partner with Him. And let me give you some practical ways you can search. You can search for an answer, for a personal word from God. Go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel says he had an excellent spirit. In one reference, it said that there's a wiser than Daniel, meaning Daniel, in biblical terms, was considered gifted above many in his wisdom. And look at Daniel chapter 9. And I see myself in here, and you probably see yourself, but this is critical to how you have to search to discover God's voice on certain specific personal things. Look at Daniel chapter 9 and verse. Let's start in verse 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God, and, I, and he did these specific things to seek by prayer and supplications, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love Him and to them that keep His commandments. Look at verse 5. We have sinned and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from the precepts and from Thy judgments. Daniel here in, in chapter 9, he's determined from the, the, from the book of Jeremiah that there's 70 weeks until the restoration of Jerusalem. He's seeking to know when that is. He's needing an answer prophetically. And he sets his face to seek the Lord. And he seeks Him by prayer. He seeks Him by prayer. Now that's obvious, right? But you, the Bible does say, you have not because ye ask not. A lot of times we get comfortable and we stop what? Yeah? My little kids are a reminder of my prayer life because they don't forget, sister. <laughs> Your kids like that? Dad, dad, mom, mom. You tell them one thing a month ago, they remember it. I can't even remember things. But they remember, oh, you said we're going to go here. You said, right, moms? This thing. How do they have the steel trap of a, you know, how is that possible that they do? And they ask, and they ask, and they're perseverant, and they're diligent to ask. And, and the Lord says, hey, ask, seek, and knock. Be diligent. Persevere in asking. He said, if, if you are earthly fathers, and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much, what? More will your heavenly Father give to them that ask? And so, seeking God, you have to ask. But then look at the rest of there in Daniel 9. With fasting. Jesus made an interesting comment when there were the disciples and they were powerless to deal with an unclean spirit that was in this man. Jesus said, this kind, this kind of unclean spirit cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. Fasting highlights your request to God. It, in my younger years, I said it's like putting your spiritual life on steroids. Right? It gets you the results for the same work. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I'm not advocating steroids, obviously. Okay? Fasting. And sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth and ashes. Sackcloth, they would get this, this rough cloth that they would use as a bed uh, that they would typically sleep on. It was uncomfortable. And, and they put that on and ashes to remind them from dust that was made from dust to return. Lord, I'm just ashes. I am, I am in need. 
And then verse 5, we have sinned. Verse 4, and made my confession. Confessing sin. One of the things that blocks God's voice in our life is because we have unconfessed sin. So when you're seeking God, I know it's simple, but you pray. If you're led to fast, be humble, be repentant. Daniel not only repented for his sins, but his nation's sins. I don't know how you apply it, but I just think, man, my home has a lot of sinners in it. (laughs) Can I confess my kids' sins? Obviously not. But as the father and as being involved, I think a lot of times collectively, you could put the fault at my feet. Right? I think about things in this church. I think about where directions could be different. And again, am I... Am I saying I can confess your sins? No. But at the same time, some can be laid at my feet too. Right? Uh, Collectively, individually, Daniel Daniel just starts confessing. And then Michael the archangel comes. And he comes and he brings him. He said, I started coming the moment you started praying. I started on my way with this message for you. this, This need you have. And I'll say this, the deeper the need, The deeper the urgency, the deeper the digging sometimes God will have you go through to get it. How bad do you want it? The Spirit of God searcheth all things, but it is a search. As a man tries to dig for hid treasure, the Bible talks about. This kind cometh only out by prayer and fasting. You need a personal word. There's something you're facing. There's something you need clear direction on. Daniel gives an excellent example where he comes in prayer. He comes in humility. Dust and ashes. Lord, I don't deserve it. Supplications. Lord, it's Your kindness. Lord, it's Your mercy. And then in addition to that, confession of sin. Confession of sin. And the Lord answered him. The Lord answered him. The voice of God is all, if we're honest, but escaping the average Christian. But it's, it's easily found. Immerse yourself in God's Word. It, his voice gets loud, clear, and direct. Dive into it. Bible memory. Bible reading. Listening to preaching. Have you ever been there? And you thought, man, the preacher's been watching a video camera of my life. Even... I hate to say it, even listening to like online, I get so convicted. (laughs) It's like, how does this guy from 10 years ago know what I'm going through? Well, that's the Holy Spirit. What is that? The Word of God, the preaching of the Word, it makes the Holy Spirit a megaphone in your heart and mind. It gives Him something to work with to speak to you personally. The Word of God amplifies His voice. Then we saw you have to get apart a still and quiet place. Then we saw lastly there, that you have to search. The Spirit of God searcheth everything. You know the reality is God has hidden some things. Proverbs says that uh, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. And he gives some examples for you. The heaven for height, the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. And you know a lot of the blessings in our life come from men who studied the heaven. Come from men who studied the earth. You know your cars, our computers, are all, they all come from us applying different applications of the minerals in the ground. Tesla, it's just lithium, brother. <laughs> it's just a mineral from a rock. Rockets, it's just minerals from a rock. You know, your cell phone that we use, it is minerals from a rock. Why? Because God hid that there in the moment He created it. And there's some men that searched it out and said, I want to search it out. It is the honor of kings to search out a matter. And then it says the heart of kings. You know what that speaks to me of? Relationships, psychology, that's really truly of God counseling. Being able to draw out wisdom and help people process. Why? Because there's some principles and wisdom God has hidden in the heart of man, and and those that search it out can understand it. But the thing is, you have to search. The problem with the church today is we're no longer searching to discover anything new. And I'm preaching to myself. We've gotten comfortable. We've gotten fat. We've gotten soft. We've gotten, you know, I have enough of God in my life, and we've stopped searching out 
matters for God. But that doesn't have to be you. God is looking to speak, but He'll speak to those who are searching out for Him. Let's pray. Lord, pray, Lord, that tonight, God, You would use Your Word to reveal some reveal some things about how you speak in the peaceful moments away from the world's noise. I pray, Lord, that, God, we would not be enamored with the man's wisdom, with the world's wisdom. Lord, we would not be content. Lord, we would desire to search out. Lord, what do you want us to search out? God, what is it that God, you've allowed in our life to glaringly show some area where we need you, your Spirit to show us and reveal some things in our life. Lord, we pray, God, that you would help us in those areas. Help us to search it out in practical ways. Help us to hear from your voice tonight. Lord, help us. Lord, would you do this, God? Would you this week give us an opportunity in a unique way to spend some time in peace and quiet with you? No one has to raise their hand here or anything like that, but if that's you, would you just pray this? Lord, I hear you tonight. Lord, I, I've been busy. I've been doing and Lord I know that I need to get alone with you I need to hear your voice I've been hearing a lot of voices I've been even busy doing things but Father if I'm honest I've neglected the one thing that's needful I've not spent time alone and and would you just pray this Lord if you'd give me the opportunity through unexpected ways or just show me how I want to commit whatever time you open up in my schedule this week to time alone with you. If you pray that, I believe God will bless that prayer. You know, the Lord loves you and He desires fellowship. Not, not, to, not to beat you over the head, but to really show you and speak to you on things that matter to you and to Him. Sometimes we get so busy in life, we forget that really we need to hear His voice and that He, the God of our creation, wants to condescend and speak to you. I don't understand it, but if that's you tonight, would you just pray that prayer? Lord, give me an unexpected opportunity, an unexpected opening in my schedule this week. And I will commit it to you. I'll commit it to time with you, to hearing from you in a still, in a, in a quiet place, Lord. And, and Lord, please move in those that prayed that. Please hear their genuineness, and their honesty. And Lord, maybe in just unexpected ways this week, give them insight on how to be obedient to what you open up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.